I've loved Rosella ever since Toto released that song, Rosella. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm gonna give you my five top tips on how to grow a ton of Rosella in just one small raised garden bed such as this. Let's get into it. Okay, you got me. I'm a Toto fan, but who isn't? Interestingly, Toto isn't an African band, and for years I thought they were, especially due to their top hit single, Africa. So imagine my shock when I found out they were American. But here's the twist, or some might call it a long bow. Many Australians think that Rosella is native to our country, but it's not. It's actually African. Well, I'll be buggered. One of those bits of trivia that you'll never need to recall. Rosella jam is considered a rare delicacy here in Oz and it's as expensive as truffle ice cream. Can you believe it? And the only way most of us Aussies can get such a gourmet food for a reasonable price is by growing it ourselves in our own backyard. I'm not gonna bore you to tears explaining every detail about Rosella, except to say I grow this plant because we love it. And if you wanna know more about it, you can either visit my extensive article and jam recipe on my website, links below, or you could just Google the many and varied uses if you like. But if you wanna grow it, here's my top five tips. Tip number one, start in seed trays. This isn't actually rosella, but it's a good example. If you start in a seed tray, you've got more chance of germinating this thing. Yes, rosella will come up in the garden. There's no problem with that. However, you have a lack of control and I've found rosella to be really inconsistent. One of these pods gives out a lot of seeds, but sometimes you can plant them direct sow and all of them will come up and other times none of them will come up, sometimes just a few, and then they can get nibbled off by rats and possums because they are a hibiscus. As a young plant, they are vulnerable to pests, especially rodents and that type of thing in the garden when they're small. As they get bigger and woodier, of course, the pests don't bother with them as much. So I would recommend sowing them in a seed tray. You wanna sow them when the temperature has risen around 20 degrees and above. They're a warm loving plant, so sowing them in summer is the best. If you're sowing them in a cooler climate or a temperate climate, sowing them indoors or under a grow light in early spring and then letting them grow on then plant out when the weather warms up, probably the end of spring, early summer. And you've got to give them as long a season as possible because rosella is a long growing plant. It is an annual but it does need a long time to get to budding and flowering and then developing those beautiful fleshy calyxes. Can you grow it in really cold climates? You can, if you grow it in a hothouse and like I said, start them early. Honestly, they probably won't grow too well in cold snowy climates. Probably best to grow them in temperate to hot climates. Tip number two, grow rosella in a raised bed. I used to grow rosella on the ground and the logic for that was it's a pretty big plant, grows like a shrub, and I thought, well, you know, why not grow it like a shrub in the ground? Of course, I mean, it makes sense. No, it doesn't. If you grow it in a raised bed like these, and nearly a meter off the ground, you can see how they have a sprawling effect. The plant actually sprawls down. Once those stems get full of fruit, they flop over, and then they end up on the ground. And what happens? Creatures eat them, worms eat them, they get dirty, the calyxes begin to rot where it's touching the ground. So growing them in a raised bed like this, they look good, but it's just more practical. And when it comes to harvesting, it's a lot easier as well. Tip number three, grow enough plants. Now these calyxes, they're not like a plum. They've got a big seed pot inside them with heaps of seeds, so it's really only this Bit of the fleshy petal around this and the base of them that you can use in jams and drinks and teas. So you need to make sure that you're growing enough 
plants. I would say for an average family, if you wanna make a nice jam of say 10 jars, you'd want at least seven plants. And that's how many is growing in this bed here. Seven's always a good number, isn't it? Now the plants here, they aren't necessarily spaced apart evenly. I've got a couple that are a bit closer together, maybe 20 centimeters, half a foot, and others that are around 40 centimeters or so, or a couple of feet away. If you want to go by the book, I would say space them at least 50 centimeters apart. If you've got a smaller bed or a smaller garden and you want to plant a couple that are closer together, I've done this many times in lots of different types of food crops as well, but rosella works good too. So if you think I've only got a small pot on a veranda and I'd like more than one plant, well, perhaps that 40 centimeter pot, you could put two plants in it. As long as you're giving them enough water and a little bit of fertilizer, appropriate amounts, those two plants will still grow quite well side by side and you'll get more fruit out of it than if you just had the one. The other thing is rosella plants can be notoriously unreliable. Sometimes a plant will crop really well and sometimes they will crop sparsely. So plant more than you need just in case you're going to get one or two plants that aren't producing the fruit that you expected and that way you can cover your losses because you've got more plants. Tip number four, two growth spurts. Some people get fooled by rosella because they think that its first flush of calyxes are disappointing and they pull the plants out or they think that it hasn't worked, it's not good for their environment or their property. What they don't realize is that often the plants will get to size and they'll have a small growth or a flourish of flowers and then calyxes soon after and it won't be very much. But what the plant is doing is just giving you a taste, so to speak. You can take those calyxes, leave it go, and then what you'll find is towards the end of the season is when it really pours it on. As the weather starts to cool down, gets towards the end of summer, it triggers the plant to produce its best flush of growth. So be patient and wait for that last flurry. And that's what I'm gonna do now. We're gonna harvest these plants. We're gonna strip them bare right in front of your eyes. We'll see how many we can harvest off these seven plants here in this raised bed. And that's the last one. Wow, tell you what, I underestimated the container I needed. Fair dinkum, look at it. That is fantastic, isn't it? Look at these plump calyxes. I recommend you do harvest them nice and plump. Don't let them wait too long on the plant until they start drying out. This is the best time to harvest them. What, no matter what you're doing, if you're making a jam or if you're going to dehydrate them yourself, get them off the plant nice and plump and then dehydrate them inside. But that's not all. Check it. A whole harvesting picnic basket thingy. Well, half of one full as well. Couldn't fit them all in that container. Told you I underestimated it, didn't I? Wow, fantastic. This is going to make a ton of jam. Nina will be happy. She loves rosella jam. You know rosella jam, this is a fact. Rosella jam is Nina's favorite of all jams. I have to say it's probably mine too because if it's my wife's favorite, you know what they say, happy wife, happy life. And tip number five, save the seeds. You might think this is a rudimentary step, but I can tell you, you don't wanna pick all your calyxes and then make a big jam, boil them all up, and you boil the seeds up for the pectin as well, and then find out, oh crikey, I haven't got enough for next year's crop. So make sure you do save some and you leave some of them ripen on the plant. You'll see a lot of mine are in the background. There's probably a good dozen or two dozen left on the plants. That's because they're a bit dry or they're a bit blemished. They're no use harvesting anyway. So I might as well let them ripen fully, dry off, and then save these seed pods for later and re-sow them. Because once you grow rosella once, 
you will want to grow it time and time again. And the best way to do that, of course, for free, is to not keep buying your seed, but just simply save the seed. And that's it. Those were my five top tips on how to grow a ton of rosella, all in just one raised garden bed such as this. Remember, number one, be a Toto fan. I mean, sow in seed trays. Two, grow in raised beds. Number three, grow enough plants. Tip number four, two growth spurts or harvesting. And number five, save the seeds just as the sun comes out. Isn't it magic? Check them out. Do all those things right and you'll grow a ton of rosella just like I can. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big red thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Okay, wrapped with that. Tip number three, grow, grow enough plants. All I wanna do when I wake up in the morning is see your eyes. Rosella, Rosella.